Okay. Hi, everyone. How is everyone doing? Fantastic. Enjoying WordCamp? Yes. Amazing, isn't it? I love WordCamp. Um, th thank you all for joining my session. This is, this is a relatively new talk. That uh, This is a new talk. You're the first ones that have heard this talk ever. And it was something I kind of dreamed up a little while ago because I thought, you know, it makes, it, it makes a talk interesting and yeah, I, can, I can use actors in it. Yes, we're using actors. Just kidding. No, you'll see. Um, but yeah, it's wonderful to be here in Brisbane. This is my first time in, in Brisbane. I've, done, I've been to Queensland before. I've done talks in Queensland before, uh, Gold Coast, but yeah, never in Brisbane. So really good to be here. And these rooms are amazing. It's, it's like a UN theatre. It's, yeah, I think we're going to table a motion today. It's, it's really cool. Um, but yeah, a bit of a milestone this week because I'm now 12 months as an evangelist, which it, it was a bit of a shift going from like being basically tied to a desk, director standing over you going, where is it, where is it, where is it? All the time as a tech lead to go out and on the road, go, here's your laptop, here's your badge, go. And it's like, wow, where do I go? <laughs> uh, but yeah, 12 months now, 250,000 kilometers. Just to give you an idea how far I've traveled. I've been, yeah, I've been around the world a few times, I think. I don't know, I haven't worked it out yet. What time zone is this? Just kidding. Um, to give you an idea of what it's like, this is, I took this this morning, this is a bag selfie, brand, this new, new thing, hashtag bag selfie. Um, I basically live out of 30 kilos of luggage because I'm, yeah, I'm on the, on the road all the time. Um, it also looks like this, so, you know, hosting a lot of events, this is actually the Battlehack World Finals that we ran uh, November last year in San Jose, so that Battlehack's the, the global hackathon series we run, well, all over the world, hence global. Um, in 14 cities, and the winning winners from each city, the winning teams, we fly into San Jose to battle it out at, at the World Finals. So, amazing weekend. Did not sleep one bit, neither did the hackers. It also looks like this. So, this is Battle Hack Melbourne. So, again, didn't sleep the entire weekend. It looks a lot like this, as you can imagine. Always on a plane, and anyone that follows me on any social media thing is always saying, you're always checking into an airport. Well, yeah, it... It looks like that. Most of all, it looks like this. So amazing community. You guys are awesome. It's been an absolute pleasure being able to fly around, sponsor conferences, WordCamp, communities like Word, the WordCamp are absolutely awesome. So big round of applause. Thank you for all. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Thank you especially to the organizer. These, these events are not easy to put on. I have run them before as well. They're a lot of work. So you know, fantastic to be able to support and be able to come out and talk to everyone about that. So, of course, I am from PayPal. Everyone's, everyone's no doubt heard of it. It's a small company. It's growing. Only kidding. Um, to give everyone an idea of the scale of the company, uh, I saw some numbers recently in uh, one, of the, one of the presentations, and it, it kind of really, it really drives it home just how much, how big, and how many, how many payments we do. We do that every minute. So $485,000 US per minute. It's about $6,000 a second. That's how much payment we process globally. Um, yeah, massive, massive, uh, to fathom that think our APIs are able to do that, like we, we do that regardless of um, you know, scale production, this is what we do. Company you may not be so familiar with, Braintree, really cool, built by devs, for devs, it's literally 12 lines of code to be able to integrate PayPal, credit card, Bitcoin, as of a few days ago, Android Pay, Apple Pay. Um, all in like one little one little integration, amazingly easy. I normally demo it. I'm not going to today. But yeah, if anyone wants to check it out, I got loads of demos on my GitHub, GitHub.com/slash/developersteve. I'm developer Steve like everywhere for those that know me. Even on Weibo, which is Chinese Facebook, for those that don't know. Um, yeah, and happy to happy to continue on today. I'll be around for the after party. Woo, after party drinks. Um, I'll be around at the after party. I'm not going to be here tomorrow. I've got to fly to Sydney for a Qantas hackathon. Again, life of the evangelist. Um, but yeah, it, happy to continue on into social media. And even when screens go black. What did screens go black? Oh, there we go. But we're going we're gonna to have a bit of a fairy tale today. Let me just readjust my screen because screensaver is kicking in yellow. Uh, That's Flux for anyone that have, hasn't heard of it. But it basically dims the screen as you go on and it hasn't disabled. It's going to go yellow. It looked like it was. 
Or it could just be the projector. Mm. Okay, that actually looks a bit better. All right, we're not going into sunset mode now. Um, so we're going to do this a little bit different, and I, I really wanted to make this make this a little bit more interesting. And thought, yeah, you know, REST API. I'm going to talk a little bit about the REST APIs first, and then go into some WordPress stuff. And I wanted to make this interesting. And I thought, what can I do that's different? Uh, so I, I, I thought, what if I did a fairy tale? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, that, that, that's kind of cool. And I thought, what about if we did it with actors, just to really sort of do something a little bit left field? So we're going to use actors. So we're the first two right No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> I, I hadn't been planning that one for a while. So here's my actors. It's high quality 8-bit art. Um, I drew it myself. You may not be able to tell. You might. Um, but this is, this is Pixel Pete. And Pixel Pete's a bit of a developer, hence why he looks like a wizard, because he's a wizard with code, right? And we're going to use Pixel Pete today to, to basically describe how a lot of the, the technologies work. And we're going to go a little bit old school here, go a little bit basic, just to sort of step through how it, how it works. So Saga begins. We've got a user, a user that needs, needs uh, WordPress help. And of course, you know, developers being developers, you know, they need, they need a little bit of encouragement. Um, hence that there. <laughs> so user's going to ask, um, ask, ask for the, the wizard for a little bit of a help, and he needs help with WordPress. Oh, look, and we've got, we've got the evil overlord here who's just come in. He's a bit of a jerk. That was, that was Baron Bitbug. Baron Bitbug it does just that, throws bugs into codes. As developers, we've all been there. So anyway, we're going, to, we're going to use these characters today to basically walk through how the REST APIs work. And of course, there we go. There's a long, boring backstory to this as well. <coughs> but we're going to jump straight into the first chapter amongst being turned in, users into frogs, which occasionally we want to do, right? So anyway, level one, we're going, to, we're going to talk about the PayPal API, which is, of course, REST-based. So this is outside of WordPress at this stage. We're going to use PHP and create a little bit of a function. Now, basically, we're using a, a curl function here to be able to call a reusable curl function just to keep things nice and simple. Basically, it's using um, curl set options to, to set username and password to be able to access endpoints. To, to pull back tokens and basically use that to, to contact the, the PayPal endpoint. So first thing we're going to do after creating the function is log into developer.paypal.com to get our key. <coughs> Whee! Stay on target. Star Wars reference. So we bring back the key from, from developer portal and then we can do our curl call using our credentials, which we take to the endpoint. So we put the key into the endpoint, and we get back an access token, which we bring back, and we can use in our script. This is way better than using actors, isn't it? <laughs> you would not believe how much time I had to spend on this animation. <laughs> See, this is what 14-hour flights are for. So once we've got an access token back, we can use that to basically facilitate the transaction. So we build a post array like that. We have a sale intent. Now, there's a number of different variables you can put into here, but for, for this purposes, we're going to use sale intent just to do a basic transaction. Um, pay our pay, payment method. Of course, we're going to use PayPal. Again, there's a few different methods you can put in there. North American, you, you can use credit card, for example. We're going to create, a, create the transaction, which we put in the total, the currency. Yeah, we use USD for this one. And we can put in a basic description, which will basically appear when the user goes to check into PayPal. And we can put in a bunch of redirect URLs just so users got somewhere to come back to. Because otherwise, we don't want to send them on a, on a dead end or lose them in the kingdom. So once we've got all that set up, we can then do our second call, like so. So we're going to send that over with PHP, send that over to the endpoint via post, and we're going to include the access token that we, we got previous. From that, we'll get a payer ID, which we can then use to, to create the, the return URL for the user to be able to log in. So now we're going to send the user. We create a nice little button on the actual website for the user to click. Oh, user popped up. 
which we can then redirect them by clicking the link to the website to log in, authorize the payment. That's it. Nice and simple, huh? So now building that into WordPress. Now there are a number of ways to do this inside various e-commerce e plugins inside WordPress. WooCommerce, there's, it's basically it's built in. But I thought you know we'd, we'd take a look at how to build that into like a page or into a, into a plugin just out of the box because sometimes you need to do that. There are times when you're going to have to create a custom thing just because a lot of the out of the box solutions aren't going to fit what you need to do. So looking at that. We're going to summon WordPress. You can tell it's WordPress because there's a W on its head, right? I didn't know how to symbolize WordPress in an 8-bit pixel art. You can't do round things. And it just looked like stop signs otherwise. So we're going to use, we're going to use WordPress, which is awesome. OK, so uh, endpoint, you, instead of using the curl, end, the curl function, the reusable function, of course, WordPress has this really good, two really good calls that you can use, WP Remote Get and WP Remote Post, which are amazing. They basically do everything wrapped up into one little function. It's, it's all built in. It's, it's all ready to go. And essentially, it works exactly the same sort of way. You create a, a, a uh, you basically have, you can send post, post data over and use get URLs to get what you need. So basically we take that and create that, which is really, really cool. We have, um, we have our endpoint, exactly the same as before. We can create arguments, so we can send over headers, we can send over uh, post data, everything we need to, to basically contact, contact our endpoint. There is a bit of a catch, however, and that was Baron Bitbug showing his head up. And uh, this one kind of drove me nuts for a little while because I was like, why is this not working? It won't work. And the reason is uh, user in the header, in the curl header, in the original one, we had a, a wait, the actors are supposed to be acting this out. Uh, but yeah, in the, in the original example, I was using post user to be in, the, in the header to basically authenticate against the gateway using my merchant credentials. Inside WordPress, inside the, the two post and gets, you can't do that inside the current function, which is something I'm going to raise. Uh, you can't actually send that through. And the PayPal gateway won't use uh, like a password, a, um, a MD5 base and code using password like I've got in the example here. It has to be sent as a, a curl uh, user login. So there's a bit of a catch there. Uh-oh, how do we get around that? So debugging. So basically, yeah, I dug around the, the, the core WordPress files and worked out that, yeah, it's not actually, you're not actually able to send through user, post user, uh, password user in, in that as part of the header, the curl header. So a bit of a workaround, which was supposed to animate. It won't. Ha <laughs> ha. Um, oh, why is it? There we go. Oh, it animated. Woo! Um, bit of a workaround. Instead, you've got to basically build a reusable function, which you drop into functions.php, and then you can call it into like anything you need it to, to call it into. Beta plugin. Well, you wouldn't really call a function inside the functions.php inside a plugin. You wouldn't want to do that. But inside inside a, a page template or any, any sort of custom theme that you needed to do it in, then yeah, it, you can basically call it in that way. Essentially, workaround-wise, you need to build your own curl call inside WordPress itself to get it to work. Make sense? That's until I submit a patch to get hopefully get that fixed. Or if anyone wants to do it before me, please go right ahead. So another thing I thought I'd talk a little bit about is Braintree tokenization. So these are tokenized payments. Has anyone, everyone heard of tokenized payments? It's a bit of a buzz phrase at the moment. Yeah, a few people. Tokenized payments are cool. So great example of tokenized payment, Uber. So I'm sure, how many people here have used Uber? Yeah. <laughs> it's becoming quite common. So Uber basically used a tokenized payment. What that is, is inside uh, the Braintree vault, you create a user and you attach a payment method to that user. What you get back is a token. Anytime you need to transact against that user, you transact against the token. Really, really easy. If you think of the Uber experience, you book a car, you get into the car, you get out, payment happens. Like you don't have to click anything, you don't have to check out, you don't have to do anything. It's what we're also calling invisible payment. It basically takes the friction away from user 
be able to uh, user experience, basically. So how that actually works, using our actors, if they get in line up properly, there we go. We standard sale, we send a, a we have JavaScript, we have a nice little drop-in UI which automatically renders onto a page. We send that over to we create a token using uh, SDK, backend SDK, PHP, Ruby, in this case we'll say PHP because WordPress. Um, we get a token back from our endpoint which we automatically we drop into the, the JavaScript to render a little tiny box in. It keeps it all very PCI. It's PCI 3.0, soon 3.1, because that's the latest standard, and which keeps things nice and secure. Basically, no credit card information, no financial information is ever needing to be stored on your website, which is really important, and I can't stress this enough. You never, ever, 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 ever store credit card information on your website, ever. Um, and with Braintree, you don't need to because it literally, it stores it inside the Braintree vault, super secure, and only you can transact against that token using your merchant ID. Really cool. From there, what happens is it, that attaches to a form inside a hidden field. It creates a, a payment method nonce. So as soon as the user puts in all their details into, into your website, fills out the little, the little payment box that appears, that sends over, creates a token on the Braintree endpoint, returns a payment method nonce, which is like a little string, 20, 30 character string, that stores inside a hidden field attached to uh, your, your checkout form, and then you can use that to create your transaction, which looks like so. So we send that over through PHP via post, which then goes off to the endpoint, and that creates your transaction. Very secure, it even has a big S because it's so secure. So Vault, the Vault version of that is basically very similar. You create a user inside at the endpoint. The user goes, fills out details. You create a user inside the endpoint. You get a token back. They put in their financial information. That then attaches inside the Vault. And again, very PCI. So all you need to do from there is you store the token against the user profile inside WordPress, for example, and then just transact as you need to. They never need to enter uh, financial information ever again into your website. From there on in, everything is, is basically stored on file. Now, last time, last WordCamp, WordCamp Sydney, I actually I spoke about IoT commerce and how, um, how basically integrating that with IoT and WordPress all in the, all in the one thing. I actually have developed a plugin for WooCommerce, which almost works. <laughs> so, and I'm going to talk about wh why it doesn't work, because hopefully someone can help me solve it. <laughs> I have pulled so much hair out over this one. So basically, it looks like this, and that's, that's the, the V0 drop-in box right there. Like, it literally renders like that on the page. Um, PayPal button, so I can use PayPal, I can use credit card, like, whatever the user wants to use, they, they can use it. As we add new wallets in, more buttons are come across the top and you can basically use whatever you need to do to check out. Uh, from an integration point of view, everything works exactly the same. So you, from there on in, when we add new stuff in, like Android Pay, button just appears and then user gets to select that. Um, from a, what, I've, what I basically got stuck with with this was inside WordPress, there's that little WordPress guy there, JavaScript and PHP. So I can integrate, get, it loads into the form. It's able to load just fine. The token gets created by PHP, passed to JavaScript, which then goes to the endpoint, and we get back a payment method nonce. That's easy. WordPress then goes, well, probably more WooCommerce. So once the, this happens once the user submits the form. What's happening is, Word, uh, user submits the form, the WooCommerce form. It sends off, creates, brings back a payment me method nonce, which attaches to a hidden field inside the WooCommerce form. The WooCommerce JavaScript tries to send that twice, which is annoying because it submits. Yeah, there's Bitbug appearing again. It submits twice, and this is the part that really <coughs> sort of stuffs things up. Inside the checkout.js inside WooCommerce, it's got a function which basically does submit and it's using on. So I can switch it off and then it's able to return everything it needs to return and behave how it needs to behave. However, then you can't switch WooCommerce JavaScript back on. <laughs> Chicken before the egg. Anyway, that's if it's on my GitHub, please, if anyone wants to go poke around it, please do. 
Um, other than that, it, w it will work just fine. What it would mean once this is working for the community is everyone can go and get it and start doing basically frictionless checkouts, which is, would be pretty cool. Just think of subscriptions. You can have subscription models where you don't have to continually ask for like sign users up to a, a plan or any type of, like you've got a reusable token. You can resell them stuff once they're logged back in, like once they're profiled really easily. Um, aside from that, we do actually have a supported version coming really soon as well. I don't have a date on that yet, but there is, is one coming. So anyway, you've been absolutely amazing. Um, I will, of course, be around through the evening. Um, I'd like to thank you all as well, my actors there. Everyone enjoy the artwork. It's pretty high quality artwork. It's very blocky. I mean, they're, they're eight bits, but they're worth an absolute fortune. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, so yeah, I'd like to thank you all for being amazing. Any questions or comments? Oh, there's one already. Ha -ha. Awesome questions. We'll get special swag too. Just saying. <laughs> oh, uh, will it support split payments or that big payments? Um, we already can do that through some WooCommerce stuff. And good question, because I love adaptive payments. It's another geeky topic. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it, there's, a, there's already a plugin inside WooCommerce that does that, and there is a version of um, a, a PayPal inside WooCommerce which will do that as well. It's broken? Sorry, I can't hear. Uh, I've written one for my plugin. And, ah. Uh, if Braintree's JS ones are good, then I'd like to not use the PHP API if I could, because it's totally broken. Okay. <laughs> um, I guess the, the magic that comes inside Braintree, um, the Braintree stuff, and uh, it's kind of slightly different models, but Adaptive is, I mean, it's more of a, a single transaction marketplace, whereas you can take a cut in between by a seller, which I'm sure you're probably doing because it's awesome for that. Um, Braintree Marketplace isn't launching outside of North America at the moment. However, there are some ways to use Braintree. There's some big players in Australia using Braintree to take payments in, big marketplaces, and then mass pay out. So you, you kind of, it's the best of the both worlds, kind of a workaround at the moment. Yeah, well, it's my plugins and marketplace plugins. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. You could, you could use, um, you can actually use Braintree Marketplace in the US through the API as well. Okay, I'll talk to you guys. Okay. <laughs> Anyone else? Hang on, I'm going to end on, so one of the things I worked on this, I've been up since 5.30 this morning because, you know, evangelist life, there's always something going on, especially with a global team. So I'm going to give you 8-bit cats with lasers <laughs> just to end on a happy, an even happier note. <laughs> Excellent. Cool. Thanks, Steve. Thank uh, you. If everyone could please um, give a warm round of um, applause.